It is a great experience to drive through the streets of Melton. Melton still has country charm, and it is growing like any other city of Melbourne. Melton is situated 45 kilometers west of Melbourne CBD. Melton was first settled by squatters establishing sheep runs in the area in the late 1830s, and a small settlement benefited from traffic passing through it on the way to the Ballarat gold fields during the Victorian gold rush. To the southeast of Melton Township is Mount Cottrell, a blast shield volcano, which produced some of the largest lava flows in the western Victoria. Early references to Melton can be found in plan prepared at the time of the Batman Treaty in 1835. It is generally believed, Surveyor William Wedge Dark made the first maps of the area in 1837. The district of Melton was declared a shire in 1871. Pike brothers settled in Australia between 1838 and 1844. Pikes were the first to settle close to Melton. They grazed their sheep on an area extending from the Corroyt to Jerrywall Creek. William was the first of the brothers to settle in Melton in 1838, taking up land on the Pennyroyal Creek. William Pike was a registered surgeon, and his brother Thomas was known as Gentleman Pike. He was a keen huntsman and introduced hunting into Melton. He was also responsible for importing foxes into Australia in 1845. Pike's hunt was one of the highlights of the Victorian calendar, bringing a slice of the old country to the new land. The hunt was held at the banks of Tulan Creek, and it is from this pursuit Melton was named. A huntsman suggested that Melton should be named after the fashionable hunting ground Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire, in England. Simon Stoughton was the second settler in the district, who took up land at Exford in 1841. At the time of his death in 1863, his estate known as Exford was around 100,000 acres. The real growth of Melton began after gold was discovered in Victoria in 1851. Today, Melton, with its country charm, has many visitor attractions. Willows Historic Park, located at the heart of Melton, gives the visitors a glimpse of Melton's pioneering past. The Willows, Melton's oldest surviving building which is located within the park, serves not only as a reflection of a bygone era, but also a monument to Victoria's pioneers. Victoria of the early 1800s was an unforgiving place, void of established roads and even tracks to follow. Those venturing inland required the strength and fortitude of most intrepid explorer. The original Willows homestead is believed to have built in the 1850s. Though the land was surveyed much before, the Crown offered it for sale only on the 22nd of November 1861 as a suburban allotment within the Shire of Braybrook. It was purchased by Charles March Williams. The house is believed to have existed in the property before Charles March Williams' purchase. Not far from Willows is Melton Botanic Gardens. Melton Botanic Gardens is a garden under development. The new plantings are mostly dry climate plants from around Australia. The Ryan Creek, which runs along the garden and the lake and the woodlands around it, are home to many species of birds. This 25-acre garden may take at least another 20 years to reach its potential. Werribee River passes through a naturally formed deep volcanic gorge in Melton. A reservoir was completed in 1916 to supply water for irrigation. Near the weir, there is a recreational area with picnic facilities. Melton Viaduct was constructed in 1886, over Melton Reservoir, by Victorian Railways, as part of the Melton Parwan section of the railway line, which established direct rail route between Melbourne and Ballarat. The beautiful township of Bacchus Marsh is situated just 10 kilometres from Melton. There are many attractions on the way to Bacchus Marsh from Melton. Let us begin the drive. A five minutes drive from Melton towards Bacchus Marsh takes us to All Nations Marion Centre. The All Nations Marion Centre that graces the landscape is a shrine dedicated to Our Lady Tarpinu, a religious devotion which originated on Gozo, the sister island of Malta. The faith of Our Lady of Tarpinu has spread to wherever there was a Maltese diaspora. 
Tunisia was the first place outside Malta to have an icon of Our Lady Ta Pinu installed in a local church. When Tunisia became a republic in 1957, this icon was removed from the church and brought to a church in Kensington in Melbourne. In 1992, plans were made to build a church in Bacchus Marsh for Ta Pinu and a big concrete cross was erected at the top of the hill and was blessed by His Lordship Francis Thomas Little. Archbishop of Melbourne, on Saturday, the 24th of February 1996. A symbolic path, marking the stations of cross representing Jesus' journey to crucifixion, goes around the hill beginning from the monument of Our Lady, and ending near the chapel at the hilltop. The Way of the Cross, designed similar to stations of the cross in Gozo, has 14 statues representing Jesus' journey, marked with a wooden cross and an olive tree, the Marian Centre also features 12 oratories erected by different ethnic communities, which makes it an all-nations church. Virgin Mary is worshipped in many different names around the globe. The chapels are by Maltese, Italian, Filipino, Hispanic, Sri Lankan, Indian, Portuguese, Slovenian, Vietnamese, Polish and Indonesian ethnic groups. A diversion from the road within five minutes takes to Merimu Reservoir. Merimu Reservoir is built on Parites Creek, is a tributary of Werribee River. The reservoir has a storing capacity of 32,000 megalitres and was constructed in three stages from 1969 to 1986 to supply drinking water to Melton and Bacchus Marsh. Another attraction we are not visiting in this road trip is Long Forest Conservation Centre in Melton. On the left of the road is Hopetown Cemetery. By the look of it, it may seem insignificant, but historically, a very important place, as far as this region is concerned. Established on land donated to the church in 1850, by an early settler named John Lee, born at Tipperary in Ireland, this is the oldest Catholic cemetery in rural Victoria. At the centre was a building, used as a chapel and school by the local Irish farming community from 1850, until it was demolished in 1876. Bishop Gould laid the foundation stone for the chapel on the 16th of October 1850. Mass continued to be celebrated at Lee's Barn until the chapel was completed. The church was dedicated to St. Lawrence O'Toole. The foundation stone is now housed at the Catholic Convent Museum beside St. Bernard's Catholic Primary School. The earliest known burial at the cemetery was that of four-year-old Jeremiah Connell in April 1851. The entry to the Bacchus Marsh Township begins with an array of elm trees lined on either side of the road. This is Bacchus Marsh Avenue of Honor. The Avenue of Honor is a tribute to the people of Bacchus Marsh, who were enlisted in the First World War. A combination of 281 Dutch elms and Huntington elms were planted 20 metres apart for approximately 2.9 kilometres along Bacchus Marsh Road. On 24 June 1918, first public meeting of the residents of the Bacchus Marsh Shire were held at Bacchus Marsh Shire Hall to decide on the steps to be taken to plant the trees on the main road. On Saturday, 10 August 1918, a crowd of over 1,000 people assembled to witness and assist in the planting of the trees. The trees were protected by well-made timber guards, affixed to each of which was a neat sheet of copper embossed name plate, giving soldier number, name, rank and battalion. The soldiers had been placed in alphabetical order and numbered the odd on one side and the even on the other, thus placing the members of one family together. Bacchus Marsh is considered as the food bowl of Victoria, being in the valley of Werribee and Lerderderg rivers. The European settlement of Bacchus Marsh began with the arrival of Kenneth Scobie Clark in December 1836. Clark sailed from Georgetown, Van Diemen's Land in May 1836 with 2,383 sheep, and first settled on Saltwater River, and on the 29th of November moved to the area today known as Bacchus Marsh. Clark settled on the banks of Lerderderg River, now owned by Bacchus Marsh Golf Club. Captain W. H. Bacchus and his son, William Henry transported 2,000 sheep from Launceston and initially camped at Pirate Creek. 
Clark relinquished all land east of Corcuparamal Creek to Captain Bacchus, and then moved to Pentland Hills. Bacchus established his head station on the site of present Manor House, and established four outstations to secure his 5,702 hectare run. There began the story of Bacchus Marsh. Among the farms here are two farms popular for fruit picking during season. One popular for strawberry picking and the other is Payne's Orchards, where depending on the season, visitors can pick cherries, apples, apricots, berries, peaches, nectarines and plums themselves and pay at the counter. As we drive through the township, on either side are building that stood the test of time for 100 to 150 years, including the ANA building, the courthouse, police cells and the memorials to Bull War volunteers, etc. One of the most significant among them is Border Inn. Border Inn was opened for business in 1851. The Border Inn was an overnight stop during the gold rush for Cobb and company coaches. Another well-known inn at that time was Woolpack in which was situated about two miles east from the Border Inn. At that early period one of the most important classes in Bacchus Marsh were the Bullock Cart drivers. Of these there were six or eight, most of them natives of Tasmania, owning their teams and making heaps of money, carting goods from Melbourne and the Bacchus Marsh to Ballarat and other goldfields. Freight at that time was about £120 from Melbourne and £70 from Bacchus Marsh. After a month or six weeks spent on a trip, the bullocks were turned out on the rich flats of Bacchus Marsh to recuperate. And the owners, with well-lined pockets, settled down to a real good spree, which only terminated when the said pockets were empty. They all owned horses, some of them aspiring to the title of races. The two miles between the Border Inn and the Woolpack was a convenient racecourse, with the advantage of excellent liquoring facilities at both ends. The evenings were finished off by a convivial meeting not generally of the quietest description at either Border Inn or Woolpack Inn, or at both the places. Bacchus Marsh is also home to two beautiful churches. St Andrew's Uniting Church was originally a Presbyterian church, and is the oldest of the three churches in Bacchus Marsh. The Presbyterian Church was established in Bacchus Marsh in 1851 and the first services were held at various places until this building was erected. Using freestone and bluestone, constructing the church was completed in 1865. A manse once stood to the east of the church. This had been built in 1858 and was demolished during the 1980s. Just opposite to the Uniting Church is Holy Trinity Anglican Church. The Holy Trinity Church replaced an old iron church and was officially opened on the 5th of June 1877. It was at the old iron church the notorious bush ranger Andrew George Scott worked as a lay preacher. Andrew Scott became known as Captain Moonlight, robbing the Edgerton Bank in May 1869. He was executed in Sydney in 1880. The prefabricated iron church was imported from England and was opened for service on the 4th of July 1855. The grave of founder of Bacchus Marsh, Captain Bacchus still stands in the church ground where an early cemetery was established. Another 12 kilometers from Bacchus Marsh is the beautiful Lederderg State Park. The Lederderg River rises from the Great Dividing Range and runs centrally through the park. There are plenty of hiking opportunities here. Lerderderg River is Melbourne's only mountain stream. The water is diverted through tunnels to Merimu Reservoir. Lerderderg River has cut through sandstone and slate to create a deep gorge in the forested hills with walls rising to 400 meters. This area is covered with thick vegetation and the landscape is wild and rugged, most accessible only on foot. The Goodman's Creek Valley runs along the eastern edge of the state park, dividing the park from the surrounding agricultural and rural residential land. On its north, the park merges with Wombat State Forest, and on its south is the outskirts of Bacchus Marsh. The park is listed as state significant by the National Trust due to the high scenic value of its riverine and gorge landscape. Strawberry and Cherry Festival is Bacchus Marsh's most popular public festival. 
This festival celebrates the new season of strawberries and cherries in the region. There is lots to see and do at this festival including fruit picking, carnival rides, live entertainment, food trucks, large main street festival market and fireworks. On the other hand, Jerewar Festival is Melton City Council's largest annual festival. It brings together thousands of people from all walks of life to enjoy different activities and share and learn from each other. Each year at Jerewar Festival, there is an intercultural stage showcasing traditional dance and music to celebrate Melton's diversity and engage locals with people and cultures from all over the world. <laughs> That's cool. So what do you mean by independence? What does that mean? Well, we try our hardest to think about social efficient, so we're teaching them skills that we'll never use with That's awesome. Thank you. Very cool. And so you can go to the school. You can sit back and play. So what, what, how do you plan to put a meeting at the Skeleton Sound?